Hello everyone and welcome back to uh, a new episode of Exploring the Metaverse. I'm excited to welcome two guests to talk about mixed reality devices and the intersection with an area that is very interesting, which is art and technology. My first guest is my idol. He pioneered the electronic music genre and is very well known for his epic outdoor music performance that blends sound and cutting edge technology in grandiose settings. Welcome, Jean-Michel Jarre. Thank you, Saïd. We are very excited also to be joined by one of the early pioneers, my favorite of all. So welcome, Stan. Hi, Saïd. Great to have you both here. There is a reason why both of you are here, by the way. Um, and we'll talk more about that. But I'd like to start just first with you, Jean-Michel, of telling us a little bit, surprisingly, as an artist, what brought you to technology? I mean, I've, I've always been uh, curious. My, my, my first uh, probably contact with uh, technology was m coming from my grandfather. My grandfather was an extraordinary man. He was an engineer and a musician, and he get he, he Got, he gave me uh, one tape recorder, uh, an old second-hand German tape recorder, when I was 10, and I became totally obsessed with it. I was recording just everything. And one day, I played the, the tape uh, backwards, and I thought that aliens were talking to me, and that was the beginning of it. I love it. I love it. How about immersive technology, then? Yes, and then immersive technology, for me, is a very old concept. The first immersive object is a book. When you read a book, you, uh, whatever it's Shakespeare or Harry Potter, you imagine the, the being the, a viewer, an, uh, an actor or a spectator. And then later on, music for me is the, the first immersive art, art form. And then I've been involved with um, electronic music, trying to uh, explore the spatial aspect of, uh, of, of uh, sound. And then, of course, when technology allowed me to, uh, to explore metaverse, and uh, as an extension of my imagination, really. That's so interesting. And how did you get around to meet Stan? It took me a while to find him, but me just too. wondering. I <laughs> think me too. Uh, I was uh, probably a, a, a big fan of Stan before I met him. I'm, I'm still a big fan. But uh, uh, I was absolutely uh, impressed by the, the fact that you had a kind of small company and at the beginning, one guy able to imagine not only a disruptive software, but it's a disruptive hardware as well, which is another story. And then uh, I said that that I really have to uh, meet uh, meet with him and uh, and his team also and uh, and partner, uh, the famous Shuki, and uh, and uh, and then from that we we decided to try to join forces to try to explore what, as an artist, I could, uh, I could provide on a creative point of view to, to, to use mixed reality in a, in a creative way for a musician. And I assume that was the genesis, maybe, of the event at Versailles, um, that really you guys brought in this experience. Stan, tell me a little bit, what was your um, reaction the first time that uh, Jean-Michel came to you asking, why don't we do something? It was very uh, emotional at first because uh, when you create things, when you build things when with your hands, when you see them being used by other people, uh, like people like Jean-Michel, uh, it's, uh, it's already a sign of uh, success maybe, uh, that you did something interesting that people want to use. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a great emotion uh, on that day uh, when we met, but also when we continue to work together. And uh, the, cum the culmination of that, for now only, uh, is this show in Versailles that, uh, that Jean-Michel performed uh, on uh, uh, the day after Christmas Eve. And uh, using, using the Lynx R1 headset uh, during the full show for this uh, hybrid uh, creation where he was able to perform in real life in the Hall of Mirrors, but also in the virtual world. Uh, and that, that was a great demonstration of the technologies we are building. But they only stay technologies if uh, people like Jean-Michel don't use them. So seeing what we've built in the hands of other people is, uh, is really ex ex exceptional. And uh, you know, when I started that company, I had no idea that it would go this far, to be honest. Yeah, that's that's uh, understandable, fully. Um, Jean-Michel, first time you put your hands on Link's device. 
you mean, I've, reaction? Yeah, I've been blown away by the fact that I, I used to uh, use uh, the headset before, and uh, I'm slightly claustrophobic. So that that always been a, a kind of uh, effort for me, even if I love metaverse and VR. And suddenly, when I I I, um, I used the, the links for the first time, suddenly I f I felt free. I felt suddenly something that uh, was like my my glasses, something that uh, I always uh, I've always been close to, and uh, also the fact that uh, uh, you can uh, have the possibility to to have some space on each side create a kind of link, unusual link with real reality. When we are talking mixed reality, even the, the, the headset, the object itself, is a mixed reality concept. Oh, that's amazing. And as you look in today into technology and uh, mixed reality included, is, are there any further blends that we should be expecting from you working eventually with Stan that really will change how the art is coming to be. Absolutely. I think, you know, mixed reality is, uh, is one, one of the future of, um, of performance for artists. The fact that you can imagine the first AR concerts where everybody in the audience can, can wear a Lynx and then, uh, uh, I mean, sharing a unique event, which would be like, let's imagine that I, I mean, I'm on stage here just with some instruments with no lights, no, no, uh, no, no, no stage design, no scenography. And the old scenography is coming from, from your device, from the VR world. And that, of course, is allowing you to, to, to create something that is much beyond the imagination of any, anybody, including mine. Yeah, perfect. And Stan, now we're with the state of art where you are. Um, what's next? Well, I, I think Links R1 was a great uh, demonstration of what was possible when we designed it in uh, 2021 and 2022. And we've seen uh, a, a lot of momentum in, the, in this industry and uh, in the technologies around them, around the smartphone and around headsets. And you can see that the market is proving that uh, with all the new actors coming, uh, coming there. And um, I, I, I think there are things that are working very well with Links R1 that we, that we brought uh, to, to the market, like this peripheral vision that you talked about, or um, the form factor even, the ergonomics, um, the, the, the hand tracking interaction. I think there are good stuff that we're going to keep and we are going to refine and give uh, uh, more resolution, maybe also more field of view. We are working with new kinds of optics. Um, you w at some point, you also need eye tracking for uh, the kind of resolution you're reaching. Uh, for the f so it's always down to the p to power, of course, but everything around uh, the technologies in the headset, uh, you know, it's not only one display or one camera, it's everything packed together in a very small uh, form factor. It's uh, the complexity of a smartphone that you put on someone else's head. So the, the challenge is there, the challenge is still there. Um, as Links R1 was a set of compromises that we are uh, trying to play around for the next generation of uh, products. Question to both of you. As um, the current uh, Lynx is uh, powered by a Snapdragon platform, and as you're looking into the future, what would be your ask for us to work on? Jean-Michel. Uh, I think it probably it would be to... Um, Enhance the, 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 the idea that Snapdragon is at the crossroad of um, lots, of the, the lots of different sectors uh, which I'm really interested by. I mean, the visual, the, the visual world and the audio world, because actually Snapdragon is at the exact crossroad of those two sectors of, um, of um, mode of expression. And actually, to, to and my, my request would be actually to, to improve this link between what you see and what you hear. I mean, when we are talking about immersive worlds, everybody is talking about visuals. And very few people are taking care of the audio side. And the, the, uh, the, the, the specificity of Snapdragon is actually, Snapdragon is on both worlds and, and existing in, bo in both worlds. So I, I think my request would be to, to uh, enhance and reinforce and strengthen the link between both worlds. And, um to bring a more uh, technical approach uh, that completes the, the Jean-Michel answer, I think the, the latency is always the next challenge. Uh, I think in pass-through, in uh, uh, sensor acquisition uh, for uh, hand tracking for SIGSDOF. 
So I, I think continuing our work that we do with you on the on the video pass through, especially, uh, is, is going to be one or one of our focus. Um, but uh, we we're already we were already very happy with uh, the first uh, Snapdragon platform that we are using in Linksar One, and uh, from where I sit, uh, I'm. I don't have a lot to ask for what we're building uh, that is coming next. I would say just one word, latency is the word. Yeah. We, are, we are expecting to, to reduce in the near future. I just, my mind is blown. Just looking at this setting from silicon to device to art, coming all together and we're talking about requirement for the future. That tells something to the market about how this technology is gonna be empowering and changing the next generation of art. So I would like to really, really, I would like to continue, but uh, I know time is uh, over. And I thank you very, very much for your time. Merci beaucoup. Et Welcome. très, très bonne chance. Yeah. Thank you very much, Saïd. Thank you. Merci à vous. Thank you, everyone, for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And for more videos on XR, please click here.